the direct result of mainstreaming, which was a tremendous idea which doesn't necessarily work. Um, there are many who think it does not work for people who are blind. There are many who think that it does not work for people who are deaf. Um, on the other hand, I know folks who made some of their best friends and got a tremendous amount of support from their peers in schools that involve primarily um, people with disabilities. So those, those issues are huge, um, but what is, is at least absolutely clear now is that people have a right in our society. We have a right to a free public education. Um, it may be a crummy free pu public education in the District of Columbia. It may be a crummy free public education if you uh, are a kid with a disability, um, but at least that, that civil right has been established. You have just transformed into Jim Wolf. Hi, I'm Jim. Um, I'm the executive director of ADA Watch, and I'm here to talk to you today. <laughs> well, um, current issues. Um, I guess the biggest, uh, here are some of the current issues. Um, will, you talk to, will you talk about the, the whole personal attendant current issue? Mikasa. Yeah, as part of Mikasa, will you talk about attendant care generally? What it's about, why people need it? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 I'll just, so I can skip that one. Okay. Um, the Americans with Disabilities Act was passed after years, and I mean literally years, of negotiation and compromise by people with disabilities with the Congress and with um, others who opposed it unalterably, um, such as our favorite, the Chamber of Commerce, um, who were convinced that they did not want to have people with disabilities in their stores <laughs> or wherever. Um, as soon as um, the ADA was passed, the courts began to tear it down. Um, the definition of a person with a disability in the ADA was honed and argued over, and every inch of it, every letter, was um, determined by you know a committee of a thousand. Um, and then the court started knocking it down, knocking it down, knocking it down. Everybody knew what it meant. There was no doubt about you know who was a person with disability covered by the act. Um, the definition is crucial because, of course, if you're not a person with disability as defined by the Act, I want you to pass. Okay. If you're not a person with a disability as defined by the Act, you're not covered by the Act, and you don't have any rights under the Act. And the Act is the primary means by which people with disabilities <coughs> obtain those kinds of rights that I was talking about a little while ago. I mean, that Linda was talking about a little while ago, um, such as um, accessible transportation. So, the, the Americans with Disabilities Act started out being a rather broad definition intended to cover, for example, folks like me. Um, I have a mental illness. I have medication that halfway works. I can sit up here and chat with y'all and not, you know, be too bad. Uh, I may not be making any sense at all, but I think I <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anais, let me know if my sentences are, you know, you know, make no sense at all, okay? Um, then the, the courts began um, relying on a part of the definition, the word substantial. The total definition is a person um, with a physical or ma mental impairment that substantially limits a major life activity. Well, what the heck? Yeah, I don't know what that means. You might know what that means. But we all knew what we meant. You know, we all knew what we meant at the time. And, for example, I could not work without the support of my, I may not be able to work anyway, but I could not work without the support of my counselor, without medication to keep me going, you know, but we all knew that. Well, turns out, the court said, First of all, substantial is like the most important word in the whole definition, okay? 
So is my mental illness a substantial limitation on any major life activity? And major life activities are like feeding myself or walking. Well, well I can usually feed myself if my partner puts food in front of my mouth. You know, uh, no, I guess not. So first few court definitions came out and all of a sudden, I was not a person with a disability after all. Who knew? <laughs> Uh, you know, all this time I've been fighting this goddamn mental illness, and now I'm not a person with a disability. And the courts did a lot of other things. They they mashed on the substantial. Then they mashed on um, a, a correction to the condition. For example, my medication. Because I am able to communicate with you in a reasonably rational way if I'm on medication, um, you look at whether or not I'm a person with a disability as I take medication. <coughs> but maybe tomorrow I won't take it. Maybe it'll make me sick. Maybe. <coughs> How can you decide what my fundamental disability is based on or something. Do you remember what his actual it offense was? It was some kind of bench warrant. It was, it was misdemeanor something. level. It was a misdemeanor level bench. Yeah, it was a misdemeanor. <laughs> and uh, little George went to the courthouse to respond when he was summoned and noticed that there were steps in front of him. He used a wheelchair. Uh, so he was unable to get into the courthouse. Well, the judge um, sent word down he better get his tail up there or he was going to be arrested. So George, in the best tradition of those of us who mostly comply with the law, threw himself from his wheelchair, crawled and dragged himself up the steps, and when he got inside, he found that the courthouse was on, the courtroom that he was supposed to be in was on the second floor. So he crawled and dragged himself up another flight of steps only for the second flight of steps, um, the judge, the clerk, and all the court workers stood at the top of the steps and made fun of him as he crawled up the steps. So the state of Tennessee, being the state of Tennessee, <laughs> argued, needless to say, George sued the state of Tennessee for having an inaccessible courtroom. Um, the state of Tennessee argued that Title II of the Americans with Disabilities Act, which is the part that has to do with state and local government, argued that Title II was unconstitutional because of this arcane little amendment to the Constitution, number 11, um, and which the court, by the way, has interpreted very broadly in the past few years anyway. Um, Y'all ought to check out the way the court's using that, not just in this situation, but in others. 